Hello, folks. Welcome to Holding On with Holder, where I talk to interesting people about interesting topics. My name is Steve Holder, and I am your host. My guest tonight is Marie Martin, mindfulness coach and tarot reader. Welcome, Marie. Thank you so much. Good to have you with me today. Uh, now, you're coming from West Virginia, correct? Yes. Okay, well, I'm in Northeast Tennessee. I'm not too far away. Uh, now, you teach mindfulness, is that correct? Yes. Would you elaborate on that, please? And tell us uh, about your background also. Yes, uh, so I work with energy. So uh, I'm also a Reiki master as well. So um, I really tap into people's energy and I... Um, I get like downloads of information that I can help with um, whatever their ailment is. Now you say downloads of information. Are you psychic? Is that what we're talking yes, about? Yes, I'm clairvoyant. Okay, that's very interesting. How long have you been doing this? Um, I just recently started into it. Um, once I started tapping into it a little more, I realized that I've always had this gift um, I've always had it. I just suppre suppressed it as far as like growing up in a Christian household. Um, that stuff just was not acceptable. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. Like quite a few people I have interviewed that are psychic or mediums or whatever, you know, they will say that they denied it for many, many years. Yes. And, uh, it's always interesting. So what exactly is mindfulness? We hear a lot about that these days. Mindfulness is about concentration on one thing. Where your attention and your thoughts go, your energy goes. And being an energy worker, that's super important to make sure that your energy is flowing in the way that you want to go. To flow into the uh, way of your goals or your passions or wherever you want to go, not to the, the places that you don't want to go. Yeah. Because yeah. your energy could do that as well. <laughs> yeah. And everybody has energy, right? Yes. Yeah, we are all made of energy. Everything is made of energy. Yeah. This clock behind but, me is made of energy. Yeah. So do you get, I guess, vibes from everybody you talk to and just knowing things yes. about them because you're talking to them. And because I'm an empath, I can also um, just pick up on people's energy, not even in my house. <laughs> like I could be in my house and I could all of a sudden get really ill. I could become really sick, like to my stomach, like I want to puke. And it's because I'm getting energy from someone else. It could be down the street. It could be in a different country. I don't know why I attach all these energies to myself, but I do. And uh, it caused me a lot of grief uh, growing up. Um, I became extremely, I was almost bedridden because I had fibromyalgia. And that was because I was attaching all of these energies to myself. And I was uh, accepting them as my own. Yeah. So. So do you also do this online? Is, can you read people's yes. energy online? Absolutely. Okay. So what's my energy? Is it good, bad, <laughs> mediocre, or what? Or is that a fair question? I don't mean to put you on the spot. Um, you have like a yellow aura. Um, but I, I'm not really, I would have to really just dig into it. Um, I mainly like to, you know, I have like a whole ritual beforehand and after okay. to really tap into it. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. I noticed on your, I don't remember if I saw it on your email, I mean, your Facebook page, your website, but you mentioned something about tapping into your divine feminine. Can you yes. elaborate on that, please? Yes. So I would like to uh, tell you a, a story about how. Um, I became scandalous. <laughs> so when I was about six years old, I walked into my sister watching porn, who was about 10 years old. 
And so that really got me in, interested in sexuality. So I was very interested in sexuality at six years old. Um, so then I, throughout the years, I was very much into my body and I wanted to like touch myself everywhere. I was more or less masturbating. Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but I was definitely doing that. But I was very in tune with my body. I wanted to explore it. I wanted to feel everything and know where everything was. Um, it was very intuitive, which, you know, now that I know what that word means, like I was very intuitive um, because I didn't know, you know, there wasn't like a knowledge of like all these body parts and what to do with it or anything like that. It was just very intuitive and very um, sensual on my part to just know myself. Um, so at that point I had definitely tapped into my divine feminine and I was absolutely in my feminine. Um, and I loved being naked and I loved running around in the woods. Like we lived in a farm. So I was just naked running around you know, being in nature, like I was just in tune with myself. Um, and then started coming the comments from my siblings, like that's inappropriate. You're not allowed to do that. Um, you can't, you know, be naked while my friends are here. Like <laughs> it was very, um, so then that started with my self-esteem, like, you know, what did I do wrong? Um, and then I started feeling bad about myself, um, started covering up, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And then I met this boy in middle school and he was super like aggressive. And I found out later that he was into hate porn. Mm. And so he was very aggressive with me. Um, he took, you know, my virginity, um, and caused me a lot of um, trauma <laughs> yeah. on top of, you know, my self-esteem already being low from my family. Um, and then I met my ex-husband. And so he helped me as far as like medical terms. Like he pulled out a medical book and he showed me like what the vagina looked like. And he helped me feel more confident and more in tune with myself. And he helped me with the knowledge part. Whereas before I was very intuitive and I really loved my body, but then he helped me with the knowledge part. So I was very thankful for that. Yeah. Um, but then he went to um, Iraq and he admitted to me that he cheated on me. And I could remember the specific time, like when it happened because his demeanor changed and the way he treated me changed. Um, and again, that whole self-esteem came back, you know, this is somebody rejecting me or, you know, not liking me for who I am or something like that, you know? And that energy just was very heavy on me. Um, and he wanted a girlfriend. He thought that would fix the marriage. And so after two years of therapy, um, and working it out and him just badgering me over and over, um, I decided, um, to do a little research. And so I did a Google search and I'm like, what is it when you have a girlfriend, but, uh, they don't live with you or something. And the very first thing that popped up was swinging. So I immediately started uh, signing up for all these websites, you know, how to meet other swingers. And so we ended up going to several parties and um, started really getting into it. Um, and it was super fun because those places allowed me to walk in and strip. I love being naked. Like that's who I am. I love being naked. So it was awesome to just walk into these clubs and just be naked. And so everybody knew me as the girl that got naked first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was a really fun environment for me. Um, and, but it was also very awkward because 
there was always that, well, okay, well, you're naked. Now we have to have sex. And then that would be the awkward part. Like, um, you know, not really knowing someone, um, not really knowing what they like and what they don't like, and then just trying to go at it. You know what I mean? So it was very strange sometimes and awkward. Um, and then we went into um, uh, open marriage, which put a very uh, big strain on our marriage because we were apart more than we were together. And then we went to um, possibly polyamory where we would uh, combine you know, our relationship with someone else's relationship. And uh, he just wasn't on board with that. Um, and he became quickly jealous of the situation. Um, and then at that point, I just had to make a decision whether or not I was going to stick it out and, you know, be with him the way he wanted to be, you know, with a girlfriend or, you know, just doing his own thing rather than us being together in a relationship. And so I just didn't feel like we were uplifting each other anymore and that our energy had become stagnant or opposites. Yeah. And so I had to make the decision to leave. I can understand that. I guess that was a very precarious time for you. Yes. Yeah. So did you ever consider making adult movies since you like to be naked? <laughs> I actually did make several adult Idiot. movies. Okay. <laughs> yes. Do you want to tell us about that or is that? Uh, they were just, you know, homemade videos. Um, I, you know, I had some other people involved that also like to make videos as well. So I've made several videos with other people um, just enjoying that um, aspect of it. Yeah. And I still have some for sale. If you uh, try really hard, you might find it. <laughs> okay. okay. So is that is that part of your uh, in, income nowadays? Is that what you're saying? No. 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 Because <laughs> people have to really find it. I mean, it's still it's still a business. You yeah. know, even that part of it is still a business. And unless you market it, I mean, people don't find it. Right. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Because there so, is so much out there. Yeah. Yeah. So you're a tarot reader. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? How did you get into that? So I was talking to a psychic friend of mine and she told me that I would be really good at it. And, uh, you know, being a new, you know, relatively getting back into being psychic and stuff like I was like, no, nah, you're, you're pulling my chain. Like, this isn't something that you know, I do, I know other people that do it. Um, but I was like, I'll give it a try. So it's been really an interesting journey to be able to pull cards that resonate with people and to, to see their face light up and be excited that, you know, I pulled the right card. And so that's, and that's me just tapping into my energy and tapping into their energy. And it has nothing to do with me um, just like guessing, you know what I mean? Like I don't have to have previous knowledge of the person. I don't have to know specifically what's happening in their life. Like I'm just able to chat, tap into the energy and be able to pull a card that is specifically for them. So does our energy change when our mood changes? Absolutely. That makes sense. Yes. Uh, now, do you believe in reincarnation? I do. I have uh, I have lived over a hundred lives. And how do you know that? Uh, it's called inner knowing. And so, once I started tapping into my higher self, uh, I get like I said downloads, and I can also tap into energy. And I can also um, tap into, you know, whether or not that has been a thing. And I have been um, getting downloads and visions of my past lives. So 
what do you say to people that tell you you just have a wild imagination? I'm sure you've heard that before. Absolutely. And I definitely have said that to my own child. So I know uh, that's just, it is a paradigm of people of the times and people are in a 3D reality and they believe certain things and they tell certain stories. And so I know that they're just telling the story of their ancestors. Yeah. Do you think we inherit energy from our ancestors? Is that passed down through the generations? Yes, karma. Okay. Ancestral karma. So part of my life is paying back bad karma for things my ancestors did? Well, we don't have to pay it back. There is a way to release it. Once you know what it is and you can tap into it and you feel it, um, you can release it. Okay. You don't have to pay it back. Okay. So you're into past life regression then? Yes. Okay. Now is that something everyone can learn to do? Yes, absolutely. And do you teach that specifically also? I don't teach that specifically. I, I teach very basics and simple steps of how to tap into your higher self so that your higher self can give you the instructions on how to make that happen. Okay. Now, would you refer to yourself as like a new age guru or what, what category can I put you in or can uh, I? My coach recently called me a spiritual midwife. A spiritual, I haven't heard that term before. Yes. Okay. So I help, it's, I love the transformation coaching of it because I take you from who you are and I rebirth you into this new person. Okay. Now you talk about rebirth into a new person. That reminds me of some Christian terminology about being born again. So yes. you're not talking about that, are you? No. <laughs> okay. What exactly do you mean by that? But it's very similar. I mean, when you start, like, you know, hearing and talking and really tapping into these different terminologies, we're all talking about the same thing, essentially, but it's slightly different. Like I'm not saying that you have to um, follow Jesus Christ to be reborn again, because I believe that you are Jesus. You have Jesus consciousness. You have God consciousness in you. And I feel like that's what Jesus was telling us when he came here. He was showing his disciples how to continue his work. You know, a lot of people to hear that and get really, really angry at you. I'm sure they are. <laughs> My father being one of them. <laughs> right. So do people sometimes tell you that you're playing God when you say things like that and refer to yourself as the divine feminine? And do you get accused of that? I have not been accused of that, no. I'm waiting for it, but... <laughs> Okay. What are the qualities of a great coach? Uh, listening. Okay. And um, being consistent and showing up. Okay. And holding space. And I suppose being empathic helps also. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever overanalyze things? I always overanalyze everything. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and when I was talking to my my psychic that did past life regression, she said, and I would definitely keep doing that. She's like, because that will help you in the long run to keep overanalyzing, to make sure that you're doing your research, to make sure that you know that you're doing something for the right reasons. Okay. Have you ever been called a rebellious person? especially when he was running around naked? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you rebellious? 
on occasion. Yeah. And uh, the, the psychic told me that's because of my Spanish nature. I have that rebellious um, Spanish ancestral karma, perhaps, um, running through me. So I have to try and rein her in sometimes. <laughs> so are your parents Spanish? Uh, we have Spanish um, ancestors, okay. but uh, so both my parents are kind of dark toned. Um, so I have a very dark complexion, but uh, we're mainly English. Yeah. Do you find that a lot of people downplay their own good points and exaggerate the good points of others? Absolutely. That can be very, very destructive, can it? Yes. Yeah. So what do you consider your biggest challenge in life so far, Marie? Um, I guess it would be the divorce. I mean, that was a really tough decision for me. We were together for 20 years. Wow. So that was a really big decision for me. Yeah. Plus we have a child together, so. Yeah. So how many kids do you have? We just have one. One, okay. Yeah. And which one of your accomplishments are you most proud of? This, being able to serve other people. This is definitely something that I've wanted to do since um, my, my sexual trauma. I always wanted to help people like through their sexual trauma or um, just help them feel better about themselves, to tap into their divine feminine and just love themselves and love their body and love who they are. That's so important to me. So how important is confidence in yourself? I mean, it's huge for anyone in business to have confidence and to be able to go out and speak your truth and be authentic and um, yeah. And that's easier said than done, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's, it's taken me a lot of work to get here. Because <laughs> I certainly did not want to, you know, be out in the spotlight in this way. Um, you know, I was a burlesque dancer and I loved being on the spotlight there. And, you know, again, stripping, like that's my thing. Like I like being naked. So that was super fun for me, but I never had to speak. I never had to talk. I never had to, you know, um, sing even. So it was a silent job. <laughs> Uh, do you have the, and part of your overanalyzing, do you have that inner critic? Absolutely. It's called an ego. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely something I've always had to struggle with. Uh, so what are the ways people self-sabotage? Um, drinking, drugs um sex sometimes um i was uh, big into bdsm for a while i mean that i feel like sometimes that was a sabotage on my part <laughs> really yes um because men can't stop themselves once they start sometimes even though you have a safe word in the bdsm culture um sometimes they didn't and so that was um, something that I dealt with. Yeah. Okay. So uh, do you think fear is the biggest obstacle most people have to overcome? Absolutely. Fear is the number one reason why people don't do things. Yeah. We're so afraid of failing. We're so afraid of humiliating ourselves. You know? Or rejection. Or yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, how, how dare you do that? Who do you think you are? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, bring on the haters. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I've i done so much inner work that, you know, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Um, how big a deal do you think it is when people are afraid to ask for help? 
I mean, that's a big one. I mean, sometimes it's, um, I don't know, it just depends on the person, I guess. No. Because uh, I mean, you have to do it. I mean, if you need the help, you have to ask for it. You have to open that throat chakra and you have to be able to tap into that and, you know, really push yourself out of your comfort zone to do that. Yeah, that's true. So do you compare yourself to others a lot at this point in your life? No. No, that's good. No. That's good. I mean, in the, when I was swinging, I constantly, you know, was looking at other bodies like, oh, this girl is so much skinnier than me, like, you know, something like that. But no, not anymore. Yeah. Everybody is beautiful. Yeah. So how do you define success in life? just calmness, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, the way that I generally look at it is peace of mind. You know, if I have peace of mind, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I remember a time in my life when I didn't have any, and I always, I fantasize about peace of mind. Every time I would see that in print or hear somebody say it, I would try to Wow, that sounds so cool. What does that feel like? Well, I finally learned and it feels really good. Yeah. I really believe that you can be a big help to a lot of people, Marie. I really do. Thank you, Steve. You have that good energy. Yes. Yeah. Which sometimes got me in trouble and, you know, people took advantage of it and, yeah. you know, hopefully they got what they needed. Yeah. Yeah. So would you like to give people your website, how they can get in touch with you? Yeah, my website is just rocket.net and that's R-O-C-K-I-T.net. Okay. Now, have you considered writing a book? I have written a book. Yeah. I just haven't uh, published it yet. Okay. Are you and it's called in? Holding Space. Holding the Faith? Holding Space. Oh, Holding Space. Okay. Yes. All right. Do you anticipate that coming out anytime soon? Uh, hopefully, yes. Okay. Well, when you do that, you can come back on and promote your book, perhaps. Sure thing, Steve. Uh, well, I thank you for being my guest. I really, really do. I've enjoyed talking to you. Uh, I enjoy speaking with you too, Steve. Well, thank you. Uh, well, folks, thanks for tuning in to Holding On With Holder. Please subscribe to my channel and feel free to share this video all over social media and be sure and check out Marie and uh, she might be able to help you. Yeah, let's tap into that energy. There you go. Well, I will let you go, Marie, and thank you again for being my guest. Thank you, Steve. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.